This is about EO skills and training. Uh, the chairs, you see the names on the chairs. And uh, we have together with us Irina Kuchma from EIFO, uh, who's going to be our operator and who's going to be helping us today in the question and answers uh, session at the end of this uh, session. Um, let me, okay. So, uh, what you know, uh, I will start by giving the basics uh, because uh, what we said in uh, when we started our um, our working group is uh, we there, there were a, a few items on the table about uh, data driven and data intensive science in EOSC uh, because uh, we focus a lot on open and uh, fair, but we know that things are moving very um, very fast to the data intensive. So. Uh, what we are doing is we're considering all these aspects of science. Um, we began by uh, definitions of digital skills and about data skills. So you can see that you know we are looking into the into the broader picture of digital skills, which include an understanding of data software and tools. And what we what we are focusing on is that EOSC, what we see EOSC is that it's a strong digital research data ecosystem with data and software at its core. Uh, and this has been evident in the past uh, days and in the past sessions. And what we're aiming is that for skills and training to do three main things among others is to mainstream open science practices and within open science, of course, it is fair. Uh, but we also want to allow all types of users to use and uptake services within the EOSC ecosystem efficiently and securely. And I would like to focus on the users because this is not about researchers, as uh, Vincian will, uh, you know, will explain very nicely. We have all types of users that are involved in the research process. And last but not least is that as we see that EOS is within an ecosystem of you know a moving target, what I would like to say to say is that we want to help develop leaders, you know, a leadership programs so that we interact with the relevant communities that are being formed, like uh, artificial intelligence, HPC. And what we would like to see is that we want to be, you know, one step ahead of anticipating emerging models for open and data intensive science. And for this, we need, you know, the skills in order to be able to do that. Uh, what our group is uh, is is about, I'm like, oops, I'm trying to see, is about facilitation, is about coordination, is about alignment. So skills and training, we know that there are many, many efforts around. We, we know that there are many programs and we will go over them um, in, in the second part of this session. Uh, but what our job here is to say, how can we facilitate, how we can coordinate and align, and possibly how can we steer all these efforts in order to have the, the best results? Uh, if you can see uh, from the skills and training, um, uh, from, from the consultation, from, from the SRIA, is I just want to present uh, two you know, major findings is that everyone, you know, that 70% um, they thought that you know skills and training is highly relevant. So that means you know, a, a good percentage. And what the second diagram shows is that it's, a, it's of high urgency. Uh, so we need to have skilled personnel. Personnel. We need to have, you know, training in place. You know, gradually enhance it. But we need to have all these uh, uh, components of the training uh, in place before 2024 if we want to make a success out of years. And um, I would like to refer back to, you know, day three or, uh, or day two of, uh, of, uh, yeah, no, day three yesterday is that. In one of the in one of the uh, polls is that training and you know trained personnel, uh, skilled personnel was uh, number two as you know from the recommendations from the fair group was you know high on the agenda you know voted uh, to be number two. Uh, so coming back to our work in the skills skills and training working group. So we are 42 members uh, representing um, uh, ministries or representatives from member states uh, and associate countries. Uh, EC, the European Commission, 
and uh, officials and easy related projects uh, with different types of expertise. So in our group, we have you know, uh, people from the libraries, people from data centers, people from RIs, people from learning uh, societies or learning environment. So I think you know we, we, we are able to represent a well-rounded view. And I would have to point out that this, uh, uh, at this moment is that we are the youngest of the, of the working uh, groups because we just started one year after everyone else started their work. Uh, we started in January 2021, 20, uh, and this is why we need to be very efficient. And of course, you know, it's it's a pity because you know we just met once physically, and then COVID arrived, so everything you know, has been uh, uh, going on uh, remotely. Uh, so our group, you know, has two priorities. One is the skills. So what we need to say, what we need to find out is, you know, what are the competencies? And then one is, you know, the training. So how can you turn these competencies, you know, how can we not, not turn these competencies, but how can we enhance these competencies and how can we build, you know, uh, the capabilities and the capacities in, 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 in Europe around EOSC? Uh, the principles and the vision driving our work, because you know we, we, we don't want to work on on the now, on the what is being uh, you know happening now. Uh, we have a vision on how we see uh, skilled uh, people, skilled personnel, and skilled uh, researchers um, in the future. So one of the key points is that, you know, how can we promote transparency and recognition of skills and qualifications? We were talking about data, we're talking about fair data, open science, EOS, whatever this entails, we need to somehow, um, we need to embed this uh, transparency and recognition in the system. How can we foster an equitable and balanced digital research labor market? So we know this is Europe. We know the European research uh, area is talking about the balanced brain, um, uh, uh, brain circulation. Uh, how can we strengthen cross-sector mobility and employability? Because we know that people who will work in research institutions and in competence centers, uh, they may move to, you know, to the public sector industry. We already see that, but we can have you know, movement and mobility from the other way around. So what we need to do is to strengthen this uh, cross-sector um, interaction. Uh, first is, you know, Another item is to invest in people to create the ecosystem that promotes learning, experimenting, and growth, and uh, cultivate uh, the, the the digital and open science culture. This is very very important because we are, you know, we have been talking about this for years now, and I think EOS is is a great push for us to do that. Build resilience into the digital skills and training to deal with the shock of the new technology. We need to anticipate new technology or unexpected incidents, for example, like COVID-19. We know that there is a lot of changing in uh, how we learn, how we train, and this is something that we need to build into the system. And also is that we need to have the human factor in the design of this digital skill system because we need to anticipate also, you know, new and emerging um, technologies and sharing models. So how can we share the skills and training has to be part of this uh, of this new era. How we have uh, separate, you know, um, divided our work. And so we have four task forces. One is on the EOS minimal skill set. So how to identify and prioritize open science and digital skills for EOS. Uh, Second task force is uh, blueprints and options for organizational models for competence centers, whatever they are. So we are investigating to see, you know, now we are going through interviews. What you know, what 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 could the flavors be like, and uh, give options to the um, to, to the different uh, stakeholders. Uh, we're also investigating how EOSC training and skills field fits into the national strategies because this is important. Uh, I will present it later. Uh, digital skills is in the agenda of every minister in um, in uh, in, uh, in in Europe. So how can we you know how can we align what we're doing in EOSC what with what is being uh, happening uh, outside EOSC? And last but not least, a very practical outcome of our group will be the specification for training catalogs. We know that 
many of the stakeholders are creating training material with, which are entering uh, catalogs and how you know it's it's like data so how can these catalogs you know how can we within this eos ecosystem how can a researcher, how can a librarian, how can a data center personnel find the right, uh, the right, uh, the right uh, material? So this is the, these are the, the four task forces. Uh, what uh, this there is a lot of ongoing work, uh, and we are expecting consolidated reports by end of November, mid December, to be published at the end of the of the of, of our term. Uh, what we will be talking today is we chose these two topics because they are more mature in our work. Is Vancien will you know take the um, uh, take the, the the from now and will, you know, from um, next uh, you know next presentation and we'll talk about the EOS minimal skill set whatever that means and then I will uh, again uh, talk about EOS the national strategies for digital skills. So Vancien. The floor is yours. Let let, let us uh, switch the sharing. Natalia, I'm sorry. Maybe yeah. you can move to inside because some people complain okay. about background noise. Okay. Um, I don't see you anymore. Um, so could you please, uh, Hina, tell me if you can see my screen? Yes. Okay, so thank you, Natalia, and then I'll take over on this. So, um, as Natalia said, this is the work of a, an entire um, task force uh, from the working group. Um, and the basic um, idea here was to say that there are already many uh, frameworks for uh, competences and skills. Um, could be related to um, digital skills at large, could be related to uh, skills for um, librarians, um, could be related to um, uh, FAIR uh, skills and uh, data stewardship. So there are many um, existing frameworks that are very good, and we have addressed them, of course, in the, um, in the, the, the context of, the, of this, uh, this working group. Um, I will go over uh, some of them uh, very rapidly. So just that you have a view of what is it that we have, um, let's say, screened here. What I wanted just to point is that in the previous session um, on business uh, models for EOSC, uh, Steve Robert Show mentioned that the, um, some skill sets, I'm quoting, are not represented. And um, so this is, this is part of their, their um, challenges to prepare uh, for, the, for their own uh, missions. It's that um, it's in flux and the landscape is uh, still moving. And this is exactly where we are uh, as well. So um, please bear, in, bear with me uh, when I will guide you through this, but this is um, work in um, progress. Okay, so we what skills can be considered essential for us? As I said, I mentioned already a few um, frameworks. There you have like the um, uh, Joint Research uh, Center um, uh, Digcomp, where you have different, um, um, let's say it's a framework in, in general for the data science, um, um, data skills in, in general. You have, I'll, I'll just close my, um, yeah, those other views. Uh, you have the very well-known uh, fair for us uh, framework. You have um, the um, ODI uh, framework, which is the Open Data Institute um, data skills framework, which is very general as well. Uh, you have this one from Liber on open, open science skills for um, librarians and, um, and researchers. So from what I'm saying, you can see that they vary in scope very much. Um, they vary also to in, to, in terms of um, what, is it the, what is the core group they are addressing. 
And um, we have to say that some of them are not very much um, of use, uh, which, is, which can be a problem. On top of that, our mission in this working group was to uh, focus on uh, the skills that are needed for EOSC and not the skills needed for open science at large, for digital skills at large. It's like digital skills, digital open and fair skills, if I may say so, in the context of the minimal viable um, EOSC with its own specificities. So um, a first step was to try to identify the target users um, within this, uh, the EOSC ecosystem and then the related skills. Um, so there's been a diagram that has been uh, conceptualized um, to improve the visibility of this EOSC um, user ecosystem. Um, and then on that, we are trying to uh, map on the existing skills and uh, frameworks that uh, I mentioned already, and to identify what is the core, what is of priority number one, let's say, within the remit of the um, EOSC uh, minimal, the minimal viable EOSC. Okay, so these are, for instance, a few, a grouping of um, core um, skills that are definitely needed, uh, needed by uh, some, if not all, of the, um, the users within the EOSC ecosystem. And um, I, I grouped them in, in colors. You'll see um, the reason why uh, at a later stage. So basically, we could see that we, yeah, actually, I, I will refer to that um, with examples um, at the later stages. It's uh, better like this. So this diagram, uh, we can say it's a canvas. Um, so it's canvas that is adjustable uh, to any kind of local uh, context. It's um, the idea is to um, maintain some readability. So of course, it is somehow a simplification of the system. So you can see that they will be missing uh, some missing roles, uh, but they can easily find their place in there. And you will see a concrete example there from a um, that we accommodated from the feedback we received from the consultation. And importantly, um, this diagram um, sketches the whole uh, or represents includes the whole uh, EOSC uh, landscape. So that goes from research infrastructures to um, data managers, to researchers, um, policymakers, citizens in general, service providers, technology providers, and so on. Okay. Um, here you can see already like a, a snapshot, let's say, of, of the, the diagram, but I will guide you through the diagram in um, full screen in the next um, slide. The first thing I wanted to say before I introduce you to the diagram itself is that I very much would like to um, thank um, Ignacio Blanquet, who had conceptualized this uh, diagram, has spent many, many hours in um, adjusting it, um, uh, many, many versions and iterations. And also I would like to thank the members of the task force for their continuous engagement and um, feedback and input so that this is still work in progress. This is important for you to, to keep in mind. Okay, so you have it here um, in full. And as I said, it's um, the last version, but possibly not the final one. So uh, what you have first, if you go to the center, the core, um, it's mapping or connecting to the key elements of the minimal viable EOSC um, architecture. Um, you have target categories of uh, people. So it's good. Um, actually, it's not people. I, I should have said uh, roles or profiles. So I will get to that to this uh, to this later on. But basically, the idea is you can see those, um, yeah, avatars as um, they can represent either um, single people, single persons, but then they can also be hats that you that one person can have, and you can have like different hats also at different moments or um, at the same time in the system. But then you have the target categories of users. They are grouped according to um, um, similar interactions with the EOSC ecosystem. And um, this is the um, color codes that you have like around those um, avatars. 
and the coding is on the um, uh, top uh, left um, hand. Then you have the outer uh, bigger uh, colored uh, ring and rings like and this maps onto the areas of activities and you can see already from here that the the boundaries are flexible so there there are some overlaps of course again this can be improved further uh, but you have overlaps and and the flex flexible boundaries between the target users and between the areas of activities um, the last, uh, the final addition we have um, uh, to this diagram is at the bottom of it. We have the EOSC educator trainer, and that was one of the main comments we've received from the, um, the consultation on the diagram that this was a role that uh, was missing, and we very much agree with that. We thank people for, for the input. Um, it has been added as a role, as a specific role, specific avatar in the system. That being said, um, we are still discussing internally because um, it is very much, um, it's clear for us that every one of those roles, every one of those profiles will have also to assume some education um, and training role within their own remit. So this is, this is kind of um, implicit for us. But as I said, as the, um, there was a massive um, requirement for um, uh, this as a, as a role, we added it. So all in all this, um, we think we pro that provides a full uh, perspective, a full view of the skills that are needed. Again, uh, taking into account the data uh, part, the open science and the, the, um, the ICT part. Now I turn to uh, some concrete examples. So I will pick three roles out of those ones because I won't have time to go over all of them. And I will um, show you how we identified from the role, what the person is doing, an example, a concrete example in um, real life, let's say, and um, the skills, the EOSC, specific skills that are needed for this particular role. And there the coloring uh, go comes back. So the first example is the data steward. So um, you can read with me that it's an expert on the preparation and treatment of data, including data selection, storage, preservation, annotation, um, provenance, and other metadata uh, maintenance and dissemination. And so for instance, this person could validate, record, trim, or any other action on each source data set of genomic samples related to the flu to guarantee that they can be properly used and integrated according to domain specific standards formats. So to do so, in terms of the EOSC skills that are required, it, this person, this role, um, will need a deep understanding of the FAIR principles, ability to use the EOSC core and exchange services, uh, for data publication and preservation, will have to be able to validate the full, fulfillment of open science principles in those um, score and exchange services related to data. And then again, it's um, tentative, but the idea was to map those broad categories of skills that I mentioned earlier with the coloring to say, okay, a data steward is a, a role where you need all of them. You need um, uh, to be fluent um, with uh, open science and uh, research data man management practices. You need to be able to interact. Oh, that's my timer. I need to go to the, to the, the end. Um, this person, this role needs to be able to um, uh, work in an interoperable way within the context of EOSC. Um, will need to be able to align and possibly also to, to co-develop um, uh, policies and will have, and that's the, the, the baseline for every role, will have some transversal skills that are needed that are related to open science at large and digital skills at large. Could be ethics, could be um, IPR, um, uh, le uh, some other legal um, frameworks and so on. I quickly move to the Next one, because you get the, the ID now. So the next example is the researcher. 
So you see that um, the researcher, and this is why um, the researcher role is on the top of the uh, of the diagram, um, at, is the main target of the EOSC ecosystem in the minimal viable EOSC. This role um, uses uh, EOSC to obtain process, produce, deposit, and share research data using mainly the services provided by the EOSC. And then you have, again, this example on the flu that is presented. And there you can see that the EOSC skills required in that situation are um, a general knowledge of the EOSC. And the, that includes, of course, the FAIR principles and an ability to use the EOSC discipline specific services. I will just take one sec to uh, discuss the EOSC discipline specific services. I know that this has been discussed a lot. We have received a lot of feedback on this as well. Um, and this is still something we, we need to address. So for the sake of uh, clarity and simplification, I have to say we mentioned everything related to discipline specific skills because researchers are working in disciplinary um, uh, areas. However, it has been mentioned and very, we very much agree with that, that um, interdisciplinary uh, skills and, and needs needs to be uh, accounted for in the in the in the document here and that will be the case so I, I just wanted to point there finally you can see here that um, on this if we look at this for instance the interoperability with EOSC that would be needed but to a lesser ex extent for instance that a research software manager um, and the alignment uh, with the policies is not present for a researcher I will skip to the next one. So the last example I had was a, an example of a policymaker. I will just like show it so that you can see that here you don't have the interoperability. It's not easy for a French speaker to say that um, uh, with the system, uh, but then you have the policy part that comes uh, back uh, for the policy uh, maker. And I think that's all for me. So over to you, Natalia, I'll stop sharing. Okay. Uh, thank you, Vincent. So now I'm inside, no cars, boats or airplanes. Uh, so I will just go very briefly, so we can give uh, we can give uh, some time to our um, for for questions and answers. Uh, I will go very briefly over the task for uh, task force uh, three about EU skills and training in national strategies. Uh, okay, why 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 do we care about that? I mean, why don't we you know why don't we focus on EOS? Uh, and I just wanted to present here uh, to all to all that you know we need to realize that we live in an ecosystem, and especially as as far as strategies and policies are concerned, uh, EOSC should be seen in the wider context because you know we have liaisons with other with other initiatives. So I put here in the in the in the circles, for example, HPC, uh, artificial intelligence. And uh, and uh, other, you know, not just a single uh, single market, but also digital Europe, which is uh, the the new program of of uh, of the European Commission and member states uh, are uh, are expected to follow. So why why are skills important to see that in the wider context? So we we have the European Skills Agenda. We have now a new, I think it was July or September, a digital education action plan for the next uh, five to seven years. We have uh, a continuation of the Digital Skills and Job Coalition, which was a top-down from the European Commission uh, initiative to coordinate member states in order to, 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 to create the skilled uh, people, the human capacity, and uh, a top-down meeting a bottom, uh, I think it's like EOS, meeting a bottoms-up approach where the EC coordinates and then each of the member states or associate countries or other countries in Europe, they are um, forming their own coalitions and they are forming their own action plans for digital skills. 
Uh, as I said, the Digital Euro program is going to be starting soon with 600 million euros only for uh, skilled, uh, for educating and uh, skilling, uh, reskilling or upskilling uh, people. We have uh, the Euro HPC upcoming uh, training and education on high performance computing. And as we said, you know, services are part of, uh, of, of EOSC. And we expect that this is going to be uh, a very, you know, interesting, um, uh, a very uh, good and interesting initiative in order to say how can, a, you know, the people that we train on HPC, how can they make sure, for example, the data uh, is, uh, is fed into EOSC and shared into the, this ecosystem, you know, open and shared. And of course, we have the pending European strategy for data with all these EU9, uh, EU data spaces um, um, uh, being, being formed, uh, which means that there we're going to have the public sector, the industry, but also the research uh, all interacting together. And then we have the universities with the Erasmus Plus, which is ending now. I'm not sure what's going to be the continuation, which is giving a lot of, uh, a lot of money on regional coordination or overall coordination in order for universities to, 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 to be into this position where they have the skilled personnel. So this is why, you know, this is why we have this task force and this is why we think it's important to when we are talking about policy and strategy and skilling and training is that we should see what is happening outside our own, um, our own uh, ecosystem. So we have launched a, a study through, um, through, a, through a consulting company uh, on national strategy for digital skills. So we will, uh, our goal is to identify gaps and overlaps with what is happening all around in, in, you know, in, in Europe and member states is to analyze what we find and to develop recommendations for policy makers in order to, 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 to most our focus is to place EOS within this, uh, with this, uh, within this environment. Uh, our goal is inclusion and sustainability because training, we said in the beginning that the role of EOS is to profession try to to help in the professionalization try to help in, in the coordination try to steer trying to advise and trying to align but at the end uh, training is a part of the infrastructure that is that costs money and training should be seen as part of the, of the bigger picture so initial evidence from the research because uh, the this is from the LDK consultants is uh, that uh, that are undertaking the study is that strategies and policies related to EOSC activity. On the left, you will see that many countries have digital skills policy and strategy in place. And that's what we have been saying is that the ministries, ministries of science, ministries of education, ministries of growth, they have these on their, on their agenda. There is an uh, increasing um, uh, policy and strategy on AI, which uh, one of the key things uh, there is we want data scientists, we want key personnel, and we want data. And then there is the open science research data policy strategy, where you can see that we are uh, a bit, uh, you know, on the lower side, but hopefully increasing. Uh, on, on the right side, what you will see is these national coalitions that have been formed for the past years. You can see the share of activities is that, you know, we have ICT professional organizations, education, so from universities, we have citizen fora, but also we have, we have uh, associations that are representing la labor force. And I think we need, we, we can only learn from, from what is being out there. Um, we are now in the process of finalizing the interviews in nine countries. I will not go in detail why we chose this country. There, is a, there was some exercise with criteria and scoring. So, you know, countries about digital economy, uh, competitiveness, impact of ICT, readiness in digital skills in general, geographical uh, spread. We're going through interviewing participants from EOS, National Coalition Ministries. And what our, uh, the consultants told us is that when we're sending them, one key finding is that the EOSC people, you know, this is a, a study coming from EOSC for EOSC, the EOSC people readily um, 
uh, respond to our uh, request for interviews, the rest of the of, of the group is not so much aware of EOSC. They don't know what it is. They are kind of reluctant uh, to go into this one hour, how long this is taking. And this is by itself, it tells us something. It tells us that we need to be more extrovert and we need to see, you know, we need to really align with what's going on. Uh, the initial evidence from the desk research is that EOSC priorities seem to be better positioned where there is evidence for artificial intelligence strategy and policy, because data is important, data science is important, uh, where for countries that they have open science and open data strategies, so EOSC is important for them, advanced skills need in several target groups and training resources, knowledge intensive industry, sectoral data processing uh, need, where, where this is, there is a need for that, ICT high performance infrastructure, and libraries and repositories having priority re related to data management. So if, you know, there, there is this mix of, of, of conditions that make EOSC to be a more priority to some than others. And this is something that we need to, to think about and see, you know, how to better, uh, better align. Uh, I will not go over this in detail, uh, we have some preliminary key findings. We put them in the slides because we will share the slides. But what is evident from the initial interviews is that there is a, a, frag a governance fragmentation um, in digital skill upgrade at the national level. No single approach. Focus on different groups per country. And from, from our understanding, researchers and universities are just missing. Universities are considered a good, you know, a good um, uh, collaborator when we're talking about data science. Uh, but when we're talking about sharing data, this is this is not in their radar uh, yet. Uh, no integrated framework for the establishment of a competent national policy. So what we see in number two and number three is that things are complex. You know, we're talking about digital skills now. Data. And everything related to data is very well embedded in the digital skills, but things are complex. Priorities are different. So this is, you know, this is a fuzzy, this is a fuzzy landscape, and it's it's really hard to know where to start. And this is uh, what we hope that our recommendations will help into this, uh, you know, into into making uh, some start or to clarifying. And then, uh, as I said, is that uh, there is a, a diversity. The diversification in the participation of stakeholders per country, especially in these national coalitions, is you know in some countries we see ministries or um, university associations or we see um, professional associations. In some country more you know others than not. And this is and this is and this is uh, this is again um, uh, a, a key issue. Then the last slide is that uh, on training. So what the, the key findings on training is that there is a lot of training going on, but what we see is that there is no uh, that open science is is not a key part of this of this of this uh, digital skills uh, training. We see that uh, there is no uh, certification framework acknowledged. So EOSC, you know, how can we do the, the, the skills in EOSC? DigComp is endorsed uh, in many countries. Uh, we see that open science and open data strategies in general, if you think of public sector, is, is, a, is a skills required at multiple levels. So from researchers, from public um, uh, you know, from, from data processors, institutional services, research infrastructures. And what is important to see is that libraries and repositories in universities, they play a crucial role for implementing the training programs for the researchers. And those are the, we just wanted to put them out there. Those are the preliminary key findings. We will analyze the, our group with a, with a consulting company to see how to better represent them. But the, the, the key message here is that EOSC should be, you know, is a player, should be a key player among many other initiatives. Uh, how can we embed ourselves in national strategies? How can we embed uh, 
EOSC data training and data stewards, uh, ICT training as a, or policy training as Van Sam presented within this uh, national strategy. Because if we do that, that means it's, it, it becomes more sustainable through funding and through structures. And this is, uh, this is very important. And I stop here because we have only five minutes for questions, but uh, we will be uh, at the clinic uh, to answer more questions. So Irina, can you take this up because Irina has been following the questions. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's a bit hard because there were so many questions and discussions. So I'll try mm -hmm. to summarize some of them. Uh, so when, when we started, uh, there were a lot of questions. Uh, was it make sense to focus on uh, data stewardship because others are doing that. And I think that's something that once Yen and Natalia addressed uh, throughout the presentation that we're re really looking broader than just uh, data stewardship. There was also a question about USC and uh, national and institutional boundaries. And I think Natalia talked about that in um, in her last part that we, uh, we're not saying that USC should be doing all that. Uh, but uh, there is a feeling that uh, some kind of alignment is needed and that's what we're looking at. Then there were a lot of questions about uh, training catalog task force uh, and uh, Emma who chairs uh, this task force is also on the call. So maybe pitching uh, Emma if, uh, if I won't cover <laughs> where we are now. Uh, we were not overlapping with RDA uh, metadata work. Uh, our task force members are involved in, uh, in that work. Uh, uh, we will build on RDA results and also all other discussions that are going in uh, EOSC 5B projects and, and other projects. Uh, so we, I want to reassure you that uh, our working group is really big and uh, we, we are involved in all, all related activities and we're making sure that we are building on what's, what's already going on. And uh, also there was a question about uh, what is it? study has already published and as Natalia said it's still work in progress uh, and uh, this working group is the youngest one it only started in January one year later than all other groups so please bear with us that we will be delivering soon and I'm keeping an eye on whether there is anything else yeah, and maybe there were also many comments, like, for example, why libraries are not separate stakeholders in the diagram where Van Sien mentioned. And as, as Van Sien mentioned, uh, we, we we thank you for, for this feedback. That, that was also what we received during consultation. And we are now working on a revised version to make some of the roles more clear and make sure that libraries have a role. So we'll, we'll answer to that uh, really soon as well. So I think uh, if, if I may respond to some of the, of the comments is uh, to Yuri is that, uh, as I said, the report, uh, it's, it's, it's work in progress. Now in the next month or so, we will intensify the report to analyze with our group. Uh, and again, uh, things are, somebody said things are blurry, that the lines are blurry, you know, uh, between skills and training for data stewardship in EOS. Indeed, this is the case. Uh, but I think what we need to uh, what we need to do is uh, we need to identify that data stewards. You know, it's 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 a term. You know, we need to clarify the term. We need to think about the, the professional, the data professional profiles and, and the jobs, and we need to also think about how you know how. Even if we define something, how is going to be implemented at the at the, at the institutional level? Uh, so it's a it's a it's a you know because a data. This is what we have been talking uh, you know before the meeting started with Vincent is that for example is you know a data steward uh, hired by a university can also be a trainer. You know, should also uh, look into into legal issues around uh, the data. So it's it's about it's about a mix of a mix of skills, and it depends on the institution how they will um, how they will uh, apply it, implement it. Yeah, if I may, we we are already like uh, 
it's already uh, noon, but uh, also on the next steps, because we did not have time to explain that, but uh, we have said that already many times, but it's still work in progress. And um, on, on the diagram, the skills that are linked to uh, and, and, and mapping out on the frameworks and then identifying the, the skills. This is something that we are about to discuss like on the next steps and how to proceed. Um, there's a, there is a clear presentation um, on how we could do that and that we think we could help. So taking the existing frameworks and see for the different roles we have in the, the diagram to see, okay, is this com uh, framework addressing uh, or is it uh, relevant for that role? Yes, no, uh, more or less. Uh, and so you can do that for the different roles so that, so that it would be helpful. Um, also another, another option uh, for us to, to, because the idea is to, of course, to help the community as much as we can um, to try to uh, map the different skills and, and the roles. Uh, for the different main stakeholders and the stakeholders, you can consider, for instance, the, the different uh, categories of organizations that will be contributing to the system. So you can see, okay, let's talk about uh, research performing organizations. Okay, those, those uh, players, they will need those roles. Um, and so they will need those skills, you see. So this is still, um, it's still to be done, uh, but I think we're getting uh, to a point where we, we get a clear idea on how to proceed. So stay tuned. And, and uh, we are very um, grateful for the feedback on the, on the chat also, because this is, this is also um, good input for us, um, definitely. If I may, uh, once again, answer to Jean-Claude Bugelman one question. So aren't we too broad here? This is a question that we have asked to the group again and again, and it has come uh, again and again back that we're not too broad. Uh, data, uh, it's a, it's a, they are digital, very literate, but we are considering uh, parts of, uh, for example, interdisciplinarity. Uh, you know, how, how can we use it? Uh, open science. We're not talking about digital, you know, digital skills like, uh, uh, using the social network. We're not, we're not talking about this. We're talking about digital skills in order for researchers and for trainers and for all the, 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 the people in between to understand what it means in order when somebody is writing a service or publishing a service uh, to hook it up to EOS. Uh, we, we, we know that open science is missing, so data stewards uh, should be educated also in open science, but also research engineers should also be uh, educated in open sciences, uh, open science uh, policy makers as well. Uh, we're talking about the leadership programs. Uh, of course, it's broad uh, and we need to prioritize. And uh, data stewards and data curators is I think priority number one. Uh, educating researchers is priority number one. Uh, but that, that, that should not stop us uh, from considering all the other, um, all the other aspects. Yes, priorities, yes, thank you. Okay, uh, uh, I think we, uh, 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 we are, um, uh, we're done, right? So now there is a break. There is a break and then there is another um, um, session at 12.30 about the Equitable EOSC chaired by Catherine Stover, one okay. of the co-chair of them. And then the clinic at 1.30. Okay.